Story time with Stone about barbers by Mark Twain. All things change except barbers, the way of barbers and the surroundings of fucking barbers, these never fucking change. What one experiences in a barber shop the first time he enters, well, it's what he always experiences in a barber shop. Afterwards and till the end of days. It just is. I got shaved this morning as usual. Man approached the door from Jones Street as I approached it from Main Street. A thing that always fucking happens. I hurried up but it was no use. He entered the door one little step ahead of me. And I followed in on his heels and saw him take the only vacant chair. The one presided over by the best barber. It always fucking happens that way. I sat down, hoping that I might fall heir to the chair belonging to the better of the remaining two barbers. But he had already begun combing his man's hair, whilst his comrade was not yet quite done rubbing up and oiling his customer's locks. I watched the probabilities with strong interest. And I saw that number two was gaining on number one, my interest grew to solicitude and the number one stopped a moment to make change on a bath ticket for a newcomer and lost ground in the race while solicitude rose to anxiety. When number one caught up again and both he and his comrade were pulling the towels away and brushing the powder from their customers' cheeks and it was about an even thing which one would say next first, my very breath stood still with suspense. But when at the culminating moment, number one stopped to pass a comb a couple of times through his customer's eyebrows. I saw that he'd lost the race by a single instant and I rose indignant and quit the fucking shop. To keep from falling into the hands of number two, who was fucking shit. For I have none of that enviable furnace and it enables a man to look calmly into the eyes of a wanton barber and tell him he'll wait for his fellow barber's chair. I stayed out for 15 minutes and then went back, hoping for better luck. Of course, all the chairs were occupied now, and four men sat waiting, silent, unsociable, distraught, and looking bored as men always do when we're waiting their turn in a barber's shop. I sat down in one of the iron-armed compartments of an old sofa and put in the time for uh, while reading the framed advertisements of all sorts of quack nostrums for dyeing and colouring hair. And then I read the greasy names on the private Bayram bottles. Read the damaged cheap print on the walls of battles, early presidents, of voluptuous, recumbent sultanas, and the tiresome and everlasting young girl pulling her grandfather's spectacles on. Exacerated in the heart of my cheerful canary and the distracting parrot that few barber shops are without. Finally, I searched out the least dilapidated of last year's illustrated papers that littered the foul centre table and conned their unjustifiable misrepresentations of old forgotten events. At last, my fucking turn came, a voice said next, and I surrendered. To number fucking two, of course. It always happened so, I said meekly that I was in a hurry and it had affected him as strongly as if it had never heard it. He shoved up my head and put a napkin under it. He ploughed his fingers into my collar and fixed the towel there. He explored my hair with his claws and suggested that it needed trimming. I said I did not want it trimmed. He explored again and said it was pretty long for the present style. Better have a little taken off. It needed it fine, especially. I said I'd had it cut only a week before. He yearned over it reflectively a moment and then asked with disparaging manner, who cut it? I came back at him promptly with a, you fucking cut it. I had him there, little fucking shit. Then he fell to stirring up his lather and regarding himself in the glass, stopping now and then to get close and examine his chin critically. Or inspect a pimple, I don't fucking know. Then he lathered one side of my face thoroughly and was about to lather the other when a dogfight attracted his attention. He ran to the window and stayed and saw it out, losing two shillings on the result in bets with the other barbers. A thing which gave me great satisfaction. He finished lathering and then began to rub in the suds with his hand. He now began to sharpen his razor on an old suspender and was delayed a good deal on account of a controversy about her. 
cheap masquerade ball or some fucking shit he'd figured out the night before. Red Kembrick and bogus ermine of some kind of king, I don't fucking know. I, all I could think about was I was stuck with number two again. He was so gratified with being chaffed about some damsel he'd smitten with his fucking charms. They used every means to continue the controversy by pretending to be annoyed at the chaffings of his fellow. His matter begot more surveyings of himself in the glass, and he put down his razor and brushed his hair with elaborate care, plastering an averted arch of it down on his forehead, accomplishing an accurate part behind and brushing the two wings forward over his ears with nice exactness. In the meantime, the lather was drying on my fucking face and apparently eating into my vital organs. Now he bent again to shave. Finally, digging his fingers into my countenance to stretch the skin and bundling and tumbling my head this way and that as convenience in shaving demands. As long as he was on the tough side of my face, I did not suffer, but when he began to rake and rip and tug at my chin, the tears came. He now made a handle of my nose to assist in shaving the corners of my upper lip, and it was by this bit of circumstantial evidence I discovered that part of his duties in the shop was to clean, clean the kerosene lamps. I had often wondered in an indolent way whether the barbers did that, whether it was the pot. About this time, I was amusing myself, trying to guess where he would be most likely to cut me this time. But he got ahead of me and sliced me on the end of the chin before I had got my mind made up. He immediately sharpened his razor. He might have done that first fucking shit. Anyway, I, I did not like a close shave and would not let him go over me a second time. I tried to get him to put up his razor, dreading that he'd make for the side of my chin. My pet tender spot, uh, place which a razor cannot touch twice without making trouble, but now well, you fellas will know what I'm talking about. But he said he only wanted to just smooth off one little roughness, and the same moment he slipped his razor along the forbidden ground and the dreaded pimple signs of a close shave rose up, smart in answering to the call. Now he soaked his towel in bay rum and slapped it all over my face nastily, slapped it over as if a human being and if he had washed his face in that way. And he tried it by slapping with the dry part of the towel as if a human being ever dried his face in such a fucking fashion. But a barber seldom rubs you like a Christian. Next, he poked some bay ruin into a cup, placed it with his towel and then choked the wound with powdered starch and, and soaked it with some more rum again. And he would have gone on soaking and powdering if forever more, no doubt, if I'd not rebelled and begged off. He powdered my whole face now, straightened me up, and began to plough my hair thoughtfully with his hands, and he suggested a shampoo, a fucking shampoo, and said my hair needed it badly, very badly. I observed that I had shampooed it myself very thoroughly in the bath just yesterday. I had him again. He next recommended some of Smith's hair glorifier, and offered to sell me a bottle I declined. He praised the new perfume, Jones delight of the toilet and proposed to sell me some of that I declined again he tendered me a, a tooth wash atrocity of his own invention when I declined offered to trade knives with me he returned to business after the miscarriage of the, this last enterprise sprinkled me all over legs and all greased my hair in defiance of my protest against it rubbed and scrubbed a good deal of it out by the roots and combed and brushed the rest parting it behind and plastering the eternal inverted arch of hair down on my forehead and then while combing my scant eyebrows and defiling them with pomade strung out an account of the achievements of a six ounce black and tan terrier of his till I heard the whistles blow for noon and knew I was five minutes too late for the train then he snatched away the towel brushed it lightly about my face Passed his comb through my eyebrows one more and gaily sang out, Next! This barber fell down and died of apoplexy two hours later. I am waiting over a day for my revenge. I am going to attend his fucking funeral, though. The end. <laughs>